Hi everybody, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining our Facebook Live to talk about consular frequently asked questions. My name is Julie, I work in the public affairs section at the embassy and I am here with my friend Ethan who works in the consular section and is going to be answering some of your most burning questions about visa applications, the approval process and what it's like working in the consular section. We also have folks who work in the consular section in the comments right now who will be answering questions. So if you have a question that we haven't covered that you would like to know the answer to, go ahead and just write it in a comment and somebody will get back to you. Ethan, can you start by telling us a little bit about the consular section? Yeah, sure, Julie. So as Julie mentioned, my name is Ethan and I'm a consular officer here at the U.S. Embassy in Lusaka. And I wanted to start off by saying uh, regarding visas, um, one of the main goals of the consular section here is to facilitate travel between Zambia and the United States. So what that means for me is I really hope that everyone who applies for a visa uh, at our embassy uh, has a smooth application process, uh, that they when they come in for their interview that they feel uh, respected, that they feel heard, and that if, uh, if their visa is, uh, is refused that they understand why, and that if it is approved that everything is clear for them. Uh, about next steps. So yeah, that's great. So maybe we could start by just uh, if could you just tell us how someone applies for a visa? What is the process that's followed here here in Lusaka? Yeah, sure. And so uh, one thing I'll start off by saying is that uh, with United States visas, there's two general categories. The first one is for immigrant visas, and that would be for people who are uh, trying to live in the United States for the long term, and non-immigrant visas. So that's generally people who are going for a short amount of time. Uh, most common for us is students or uh, tourist visas or people going to visit relatives. Uh, so I would say the first step for anybody is to do research. Uh, a good, the best place to start I would recommend is our embassy website uh, on the main visas page. So uh, our website is uh, zm.usembassy.gov and then you would select on the tab that says I need a US visa or go to our visas website. And there's a lot of information there It goes over uh, immigrant visas and non-immigrant visas. Uh, I'll spend a little, since you asked about how to apply for a visa, I'm going to spend a little bit more time talking about the non-immigrant visas because that's the majority of our applicants. Mm -hmm. So for non-immigrant visas, um, what would an individual, what they would need to do, uh, they could get in, go on our website and visas page and select those view local information tab and there's a list of different steps that need to take place. Uh, the first thing they would do is fill out what's called a form DS-160, which is a visa application form. And that form goes over a wide host of questions about uh, who you're traveling with, uh, what you do for your work, uh, what, what your travel dates are. I ask a lot of things and uh, really you need to spend a bit of time answering as best you can. Uh, after completing that DS-160 form, uh, the next step is to uh, create your personal visa account. And it, uh, this, this is the account that you'll use to schedule your appointment to make your payment. Uh, before you pay, so after you create that second account, before you pay, you will be able to see when the next available appointment is before you uh, make the payment. Uh, once, once you decide you want to go through with the payment, uh, you will receive a, uh, you'll be able to print out a payment slip that you can bring to any Zonico bank branch. Uh, the general fee for a regular tourist visa, what's, what, you know, what we call a B1B2 visa, is $160. Uh, and and so you make the payment, you could schedule your, then you could schedule your appointment, uh, and then you would come in for, um, you come in for an interview. And then after you schedule the appointment too, you would get a, you would be emailed a confirmation email with a list of any required documents you need to bring with you. And that's the only way to make the payment for a visa application, right? Because yeah. I've heard that there are some websites or companies that are saying that you can pay them and they'll get you a visa. Is that true? So what, what you need to know is the only way that the only payment method associated with the U.S. Embassy in Lusaka for a non-immigrant visa is paying someone paying you or someone on your behalf paying in person at a Zonico Bank branch. Okay. If you see something online saying you can pay through a credit card, or if you see something online that says you can pay in a different manner, it's it's not associated with us, and I would recommend you be quite cautious. Okay, got it. So. Once you actually schedule the interview and you go in for the interview, what happens in the interview? Like, what, what kind of makes for a stronger interview? What are you looking for when you when you interview somebody for a visa? Yeah, and then 
just to give a little bit of context to, to our listeners, um, just uh, bef before they even come into the interview, uh, they'll go through. A, they'll come. Uh, they'll come. You'll come at your appointment time. I'd recommend you come a little early so you don't miss your appointment. You'll go through a security screening. Make sure you leave any electronics and bags at home. Uh, and then when you come in to the consular section, you go through an intake process. Uh, you'll make sure all, someone will make sure all your documents are ordered. And then you'll come to the interview window. And so, I would say what makes for a stronger interview, uh, one, uh, well, the most important is honesty. So, uh, when you're answering questions, and this starts from your when you're, this starts from when you started to fill out your application to to the interview itself. Uh, be honest. Uh, once someone suspects, once an officer suspects and you're not completely forthcoming, it's really hard to come back from that. Uh, second, I would say prepare yourself. Know this is a chance for you to explain your reason for travel. So know where you're going, know who you're going with, know how you're going to fund your trip. Uh, mentally prepare. Uh, dress for the occasion. If you don't have to dress super formally, but you want to make yourself look presentable. Uh, lastly, uh, I would say be confident, uh, speak loudly. Uh, yeah, and then take time to know, to um, understand what the, the outcome was as well. So every time somebody has an interview, you tell them the outcome right then there at the end of the interview? Uh, generally. So generally with uh, non-immigrant visas, uh, generally the applicant will know the outcome at the conclusion of their interview. Not always, sometimes uh, more information might be requested or uh, something else might happen, but generally applicants will know uh, at the end of their interview. Okay, and, and you mentioned documents and, and supporting papers that they might have to bring with them. What what documents are usually required for, for a visa application? So again, for like non-immigrant visas, there's really, a, there's a limited amount of documents that are required. Uh, however, you might, applicants might want to bring the supporting documents to help them make their help them during their interview. Uh, what might be, whatever is required will be included in the confirmation email that applicants receive. Um, so for example, passport, passport photo, uh, confirmation paper, uh, their DS-160 confirmation paper, that is required. Um, however, a lot of applicants uh, for, might bring supporting documents that kind of explain how they'll pay for the trip or kind of give some a better understanding of where they're going or what they're doing. Right. And it also depends on visa class. Uh, if, for example, if someone's a student applicant, they will be required to bring what's called a Form I-20, which is um, a document showing that they've been accepted to a school in the United States. Okay, so for a student visa application, they have to have already been accepted to a school. Correct, that's right. Got it. Um, so Zambians, I, I believe their visas last for two years, is that right? Well, a general Zambian tourist visa is three years. Three years, okay. And so what happens when the three-year tourist visa expires? Do they have to come in for another interview? What is the process that somebody follows when, they, when they've already had a visa but it's expired? So we do have a program which is um, renewals without interview. Uh, so if someone had a, a, a B1, B2 tourist visa or a few other visa classes, for example, an F1 student visa or a few other visa classes, uh, and it has expired within the past 48 months, uh, they may be eligible for a renewal without an interview. So what that means is they would go online, make their, um, uh, schedule their appointment, but they would, beforehand they would answer a series of questions, and if the system determines that they qualify for this option, they will be prompted to uh, drop off their uh, application packet in the afternoon, and someone else could drop off um, for them, um, and they then, the, uh, the visa would be processed without an interview. However, uh, if, if necessary, they would be called in for an interview as well. Right, okay. So they would do that at the same website where they would normally go to, to apply for a first-time visa? That's right, yeah, Okay. same website. So they answer questions and then the system will tell them if they qualify to, to apply to renew without an interview? Okay, got it. And so they still pay the same fee, same application fee, and they might be asked for supporting documents and. Same application fee, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. As far as traveling to the United States right now, do you know what the requirements are for, for a Zambian who's traveling on a visa to, to travel to the US? I know that there were a lot of different COVID procedures and Yeah, so it can depend, but um, generally for a Zambian tourist uh, traveling to the United States, it's possible now what they would need is um, proof of vaccination and 
uh, COVID tests taken within the past 24 hours. Uh, so there are some variations though, and I would um, I would recommend a good place, a good resource is the COVID-19 page on our U.S. Embassy website. It's on the main page. Um, and then that, that, if you go on there, you can read up on different requirements. You can also go to the U.S. Uh, CDC, Center for Disease Control's website, and they have a good, uh, good resources on to quickly determine if uh, what is required for you to get into the United States at this moment. Got it. So all the information that you're giving us is available on the embassy's website. Correct. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. I'll just in case anybody missed that the the website address is zm.usembassy.gov. So all the information that Ethan is giving us is also available on our website. If, if anything, if you missed anything and, and you want to confirm and see it in writing. Um, one of the questions that we frequently get is, is about fees for visa interviews. Mm -hmm. And people want to know why they have to pay a fee for the visa application mm -hmm. if there's no guarantee that they're going to get a visa. Can you tell us kind of what the fees are for and, and why everybody has to pay them? Sure. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so basically, the fees for the interviews cover the services that they're receiving. So uh, con uh, the consular section of the U.S. Embassy, uh, it will it collects fees to cover its own services, and so uh, the, the fee is going. Generally, the fee is going to cover the cost of the service. There are sometimes additional fees. Um, sometimes that's determined by visa class. Um, so, so a certain visa class might need additional processing, so there might be an additional fee. Or sometimes it's determined by a country by country basis, so certain uh, nationalities, depending on the, the, relation, the, the, the different costs between the two countries, uh, different visa types. Sometimes there's an additional fee related to that. But in general, it, the fees to cover the cost of service. I see. Okay, so the cost is really for for processing the application. You know, somebody has to read it, somebody has to process it, print out the actual visa, mm -hmm. fingerprint the person who comes in, go through all their documents. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm sure that Americans probably apply. I, you may not know the answer to this, but I'm sure Americans applying for visas to come to Zambia also have to pay a fee just to apply for the visa. So for what, talking about visa fees and, and scheduling visa appointments, I know that the, the consular section was closed for some time and it was not processing routine visas, only emergency visas. For people who had an appointment during that time, are they, do they have to pay the fee again or can they reschedule for, for an appointment that, that was canceled previously because of the pandemic? Or maybe you've already done all the appointments that were canceled. Oh no, so they, they're <laughs> still, still catching up. They were still catching up. There's, there's still a number of people who, um, who were, whose visas uh, applications were unfortunately canceled their appointments, uh, but the fee is still valid and they're still able to schedule an appointment. I, I believe um, if your if your interview is canceled due to the pandemic, the the date I believe is September two thousand twenty three. Uh, up to that date, you're, you're able to reschedule your appointment up until that time. Your fee will be uh, uh, recognized until that time. And also, I will say that we do currently have open uh, appointment slots in the coming. In the coming weeks and months, so your applicants are able to schedule their uh, their appointments now if they want to. Oh, that's great! Wow, September twenty twenty three. Okay, so they have about a year and a half to, right, yeah. to schedule still. That's great. Okay, and and going back to the question of, of visa interviews, uh, you you mentioned some of the some tips for people who are coming in for visa interviews. When when you interview somebody for let's say a tourist visa. What are you What are you evaluating them for? Is there a specific criteria that you're looking for? Yeah, so I would say generally, uh, officers, consular officers, are looking that uh, the applicant is uh, qualifies for the visa type they selected. Uh, they're also looking to see if there's any ineligibilities that might um, prevent someone from qualifying for that visa. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say if someone is if you're if, if someone's worried that they might not qualify for a visa. Uh, there is public information out there um, explaining why, uh, why visas are denied, why U.S. visas are denied. So if you do some research, you should be able to have a good under, well, uh, you should be able to have an understanding of what, uh, what to expect. Um, the, the, the resource I'm talking about would be, is the State Department's website. There's, it's called travel.state.gov, and on there you can go to their visas page and then select the type of visa you're interested in, and then it talks about the different uh, qualifications for those that visa type, and so that should should be able to give someone a person, a worried person who's not sure if, do I qualify this or not. They can do some research, and that should give them a little bit of a better understanding of 
what to expect. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So travel.state.gov is, is a really great resource. I actually use that myself when I'm traveling internationally to other countries. Uh, travel.state.gov has information about every single country and travel warnings, uh, the situation in that particular country and whether or not it's safe to travel there, that type of thing. And it does include a lot of information on visa types, not only non-immigrant visas, but immigrant visas as well and what the qualifications are. So that's a great resource if people are, are uncertain whether they qualify for the visa type or not. Um, as far as immigrant visas, what are, what are kind of the main kinds of immigrant visas that, that you see here in Zambia? Yeah, so, so again, immigrant visas are for people who are moving to the United States. They're trying to live in the United States for the long time, long term. Uh, generally, we see a lot of uh, spouses or fiancés of American citizens uh, or permanent residents. We also see a lot of uh, children of American citizens who are moving to the United States. Uh, so we do see some, uh, some uh, work-related visas, for example, some Zambian nurses uh, immigrating to the United States for work purposes. So it's it's a host, but majority of it is based on uh, people's like, uh, really, really, someone who's related to an American citizen in some way or the other being able, uh, being able to move to the United States. For Got it. And, and most immigrant visas are based on petitions that have to be started by someone else, right? Like yeah. you, you mentioned nurses traveling to the U.S. to work. They would already have to have a job lined up for them Correct, as yeah. a nurse, and their employer would have to petition for them, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. So there's no visa where you can, you know, there's no visa for, like, going to the U.S. to look for a job, right? Yeah, not not really, no. Uh, even, like, non-immigrant visas, like, some, some non-immigrant visas are for work purposes, but even then it's generally started with a petition that starts in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, maybe someone's going to work in an IT company or something like that, but then that, that IT company would start the process in the United States then call the person over from Zambia right. and ask them to come and do an interview. So, okay. so that, yeah, that's how it generally works. Got it. And and a tourist visa, B1, B2 visa, you're not allowed to work on that visa, Yeah, right? Yeah, you can't work on that. I uh, can't earn money on that, yeah. And if somebody were to do that? That would be bad, yeah. That would be, that would be against the rules. They'd Correct. lose their visa. Sure. They would violate the terms of their visa. Okay, got it. Um, question for on U.S. citizens, because as you know, we do have actually quite a, num a large number of U.S. citizens who either live in Zambia or are residents in Zambia long term or, or who come here to study abroad, that type of thing, do different programs. If there's a U.S. citizen here in Zambia who wants to renew their U.S. passport, is that something the consular section does too? And if so, what's the process that they follow? Yeah, so uh, that's, that's an important part of our job is helping Americans uh, living overseas to renew their passports. So. Uh, the process would be, uh, you would go on, uh, again on our website there's a way to schedule an appointment to renew your, your American passport. Um, you would go on uh, the, the embassy's website and go to the section for American citizen services and passport services and you would uh, schedule your appointment. The, the website also tells what kind of forms you need, so for example if you're renewing an adult passport or if you're uh, renewing a child passport, there's different requirements and different fees, and so all that information is on our website. And uh, so you go on their schedule, and you come in and uh, take um, uh, go through the process of renewing. And then generally, um, it would take like two to three weeks to get an American passport. Oh, that's pretty back. fast. That's yeah, pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. Come back here. That's faster than doing it in the U.S. in some cases. Yep. Wow. Okay, so we've, we've talked about, about non-immigrant visas, uh, immigrant visas, and passports. What else does the consular section do? Are there other services that you provide? Yeah, so we do a variety of other services. Um, one of the important things we do is helping Americans in distress here in Zambia. So if an American is arrested or destitute with no way to get back home, sometimes we're, we're able to assist them. Uh, we also try to make sure that we give good information to Americans living in Zambia. For example, uh, we have a pro program called step.gov, which we um, send out uh, alerts regarding safety or other, like, for example, we just send them one about tax information to help inform the American community here. Uh, other services, uh, we try to, we facilitate official travel between the two countries, among other things. Yeah, we, there's, a, there's a variety of things we, we, we do. And, and so to find out about any of those services, uh, just to mention again, all of that information is on our website, zm.usembassy.gov, uh, or if you're looking for more information about the services that are provided overseas at all U.S. embassies and consulates, you can also visit travel.state.gov for more information. And 
you mentioned, Ethan, the STEP program. Is that something that all U.S. citizens who are who are traveling to Zambia should sign up for? Is that the best way to get information from the embassy? Yeah, it's a, it's a great resource before you come to Zambia or if you're living here to sign up for that program. Uh, then you'll get alerts on uh, relevant information uh, from the embassy. And yeah, it's a great program. And that's a worldwide program, right? So if you're traveling as a U.S. citizen anywhere in the world, you can kind of type in the country you're going to and, and they'll send you alerts for that country? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. And so they can sign up for that on the website as well, travel.state.gov? Yeah, travel.state.gov would have a link to it, or our embassy, Zambia's embassy website would also have a link to it. Yeah, both ways would work. Okay, cool. Um, those are all of the questions that I have. For everybody who's watching, please keep on asking your questions in the comments section as well, and we'll write back to you there uh, with any questions. Is there anything else that you want to that you want to add, Ethan? The, no, uh, thank you for this opportunity, and okay. yeah, I wish... Um, uh, yeah, I would encourage people to consider traveling to the United States and, uh, yeah, uh, come on through. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody.